Uh, let's shift to another trend on uh, cellular and gene therapy. There's going to be, there is a capacity crunch, and there's going to continue to be. Um, the obviously the need in cellular therapy for for uh, small scale production and so forth is different, very different from it is for viral viral vectors where you can need up to 2,000 liters. But in both areas, we're seeing a shortfall, and in cell therapy in particular, that's about a 5x current capacity could and would be used if it were available. Essentially, we're seeing an 18-month uh, hold time on uh, uh, project acceptance at, for contract manufacturers for, um, for, for a cell therapy uh, product or project, which means that if the capacity were there, if it were built, then it would be used. So th these are, we're also seeing that this shortfall is likely, when we've explored that a little more deeply, that it, this shortfall is likely to continue because the, it's not just the bricks and mortar of the build out, it's the people, the, the, the hands on staff with the ability to, to manufacture and work with these very specialized technologies, they're not there yet. So you can have a facility, you can have a single use technology, but if you don't have the staff necessary to do this production, then you are not going to be in a position to be able to scale up. Jonathan, you're, you're, you're living and breathing that world, I suspect. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Eric. And, you know, that's something that we're, we're trying to do on, on, on the shop floor. So we're expanding our um, gene therapy capabilities in our Texas facility. And we're coming across these, these sort of trends exactly. How do, we get, how do we get larger volumes? Because there's a great demand there. But actually, a real true investment on the process development and some of the, the key skills that will sort of enable us to, 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 to use this capacity. So, yeah, it's, it's something that our business strategy guys are picking up and driving through. And, um, you know, we, we see more and more cellular and gene therapies growing every day. And, you know, I think this is just going to be a, a constant emerging trend within this industry. Yeah. And, and I, I, a slide I've got a, coming up in a few, it goes direct, directly to your issue of uh, process development expertise. So let me, but let me jump into uh, one on related to capacity first. Uh, what, when we look at our bioprocessing capacity growth over years and we've we've had our top 1000 bio website available for i think 15 years now where we've we've tracked the capacity um for bioprocessing we find 1625 biomanufacturing facilities worldwide with some bioreactor capacity and we rank those based on their capacity their number of, of bioprocessing related employees and the number of products and so forth. We're now tracking 16.6, I think it's almost 17 million now actually, um, liters of capacity worldwide. That's for recombinant, non-recombinant vaccines, blood and plasma derived products, uh, veterinary products, biogenerics, which are, which are biosimilars produced for non-GMP um, uh, 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 segments of the, of the world that, that are, are not necessarily capable of producing a, uh, a GMP level uh, quality, but we track that as well because the non-GMP facility in China today will be GMP selling a biosimilar in the very near future. So knowing where that capacity is and, and tracking it and its growth is really important, especially as you relate it to GMP, uh, the shift from non-GMP to GMP. But what we see is 880 global facilities each have over a thousand liters. So that's a lot of capacity right there alone. And there are 1,100 facilities that have 500 liters of capacity total. So we'll, we'll, a couple of little uh, data tidbits is that the U.S. has the most facilities, but the EU has more capacity via larger um, facilities. Asia is nearing the U.S. in terms of the numbers, but their capacity remains very small right now. Uh, aside from the supersized facilities and, uh, such as Samsung and others in, in, in the region. Um, and, and of course, the U.S. has the largest number of uh, CMOs. So um, it's a good industry to be in. It is a top-heavy distribution, though, in terms of the um, – uh, when we look at sort of like an 80-20 distribution, we see that the top 10 facilities alone have 40 percent of the worldwide capacity. So that alone indicates uh, a very heavy um, uh, distribution. In addition, the top 100 have something like 66 or 70, 66 percent of the capacity. So 100 out of um, out of 1,600 uh, facilities 
Um, that's one out of 16 facilities contain um, almost 70% of the world capacity. So it is, is it, it remains a very top-heavy world. 